SBR Sports Fix. My name is Peter Loshak. Today is Thursday, September 7th. It's week two in college football. We're talking right now with Joe Gavassi from JoeGavassiSports.com about a selection of games that go on Saturday in college football. We're going to talk about another interesting game right now, Joe Gavassi, Marshall against NC State. Marshall, of course, is coming off of a, uh, a terrible year, a down year, a surprisingly down year where everything went wrong for them in terms of chemistry, injuries, uh, their offensive and defensive numbers were just abysmal. But before last year, they were a very respectable program, often undervalued. And, uh, you know, a lot of people are expecting a bounce back from them this year, uh, but they're varying, uh, you know, opinions on how strong of a bounce back we should expect. They did win their uh, first game of the season where the line moved against them. They played Miami of Ohio. Miami, Ohio took a lot of money and Marshall wound up winning, but uh, uh, Marshall actually got outgained significantly by Miami of Ohio. And uh, NC State was also involved in a game where the, uh, where the winner got significantly outgained. NC State was on the wrong side of that one. They lost outright to South Carolina, but they way, way outgained South Carolina. They actually doubled their yards. So now they come back uh, into this game where both teams were involved in a week one games where, uh, where the winner uh, was, uh, was significantly outgained by the loser. And it's a high spread here. And the line has moved in North Carolina State's uh, favor. It opened at about 22. Now it's up to 24 and a half or 25. The question is, how much of a talent edge does North Carolina State have here? Does it warrant a, a 24 and a half or 25 point line? What do you think, Joe Gavazzi? Your analysis is absolutely correct. Yeah. We call this in my office a perception reality game. Other savvy expert handicappers call it an inside out stat game. And those happen because of exactly the reasons you said, most notably turnovers or return yardage. In the Marshall victory over Miami of Florida, they scored on two kickoff returns and a 72-yard pick six. They actually only scored 10 offensive points on 208 yards. That's a pretty phony win. Yes, Marshall, but in some corners, is expected to bounce back. That would be normally true if a quality team uh, with great tradition had a down season like Marshall did. I'm not so sure that's going to happen for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Remember, there were chemistry issues to which you alluded, and quarterback Linton may have been at the heart of that, is still in the lineup for the Herd. As for NC State, a similar occurrence. When South Carolina scored on a kickoff return and then converted two North Carolina State turnovers into 14 points on a short field. And as you said, NC State nearly doubled them. So what we have here is two teams, one of which won in a very phony way and one of which lost in a very phony way. That most of the time will reverse pattern in the next game. NC State has what many consider to be, including this bureau, the best combination of offense and defensive lines in the nation. Very, very veteran, very experienced. And along with that, they have a coach and head coach, Dave Duran, who is squarely on the hot seat now. It's a good bounce back spot for him. He's seven and two against the spread, laying 20 or more points. Caution is advised, however, because if you look at the results from week one, note that only about 40% of home favorites of 20 or more are covered combined with road favorites. So the dominant superior team had a very poor showing versus the points in week one. Week under the belt may change that, and I think just such might be the case with the NC State Wolfpack, who I predict rolls to a four-touchdown victory. All right, a four-touchdown victory. We'll get it done, but this line is creeping up. It opened at 22 at Pinnacle and at the Greek, and uh, uh, needless to say, that would be a much more uh, preferable line than uh, where we are now. The market is a little bit uncertain. It's 24 and a half uh, market-wide, but sharp books are disagreeing. Pinnacle has 25. The Greek and U-Wager have 24. So uh, you want to shop around uh, if, you're if you're betting this line right now. Definitely there is uh, uncertainty as to where uh, this line should be and where it is likely to be headed. Rika appears to have a lean uh, towards Marshall. Too many points there. And uh, Pinnacle appears to have a lean towards NC State. 24 and a half, still not enough points. And Joe Gavassi agreeing with Pinnacle, leaning NC State. Right now, uh, we'll give you the Greek line. A Greek and you wager have 24. Joe Gavassi recommending a play on NC State, minus 24. Awesome breakdown, Joe Gavassi. That's what Joe Gavassi does. Tell us about your website, JoeGavassiSports.com. It is JoeGavassiSports.com. And although we're talking about college football on these videos, I've penned an article about NFL turnovers, which I think can be very valuable for you, especially in week one action. 
I pointed out four games in which it just might apply. You can pick up that article at NFL Three Picks at JoeGavazzisports.com. Read the article on NFL turnovers there. Thanks so much, Joe. Well, this episode of The Odds Couple is over. But if you give us a like and click SBR's logo at the bottom of the screen to subscribe, then you'll get all the upcoming videos as soon as they come out. And don't forget to take advantage of our website. There's free picks, live betting lines, and sportsbook reviews, and ratings guides, and a whole lot more. Check it out now.